Dakota is here to say hi to. I just turned around and she was sitting at my feet looking at me. So she says, hello, show me to the people. My fans need to see my furry face. There she is. Say hello, say hello to the people. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, gilding flakes. I did a gilding flakes demo, oh, maybe about 18 months ago. And I believe I am still sweeping up gilding flakes. Yeah, uh, they get everywhere. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong, I love them. But they are quite a handful to contain. So when I tell you, when I give you hints on how to use them, uh, do as I say, not as I do, unless you want to be picking out uh, gilding flakes from uh, your bra later on today. Okay, perfect, gilding flakes. What are gilding flakes? Here we go. So this is from Cosmic Shimmer. We have, not only do we have copper, which is beautiful, this is the one I'm demoing with. We also have gold. We also have silver. Here we go, silver. And we also have this one, which is called Warm Sunrise, which is a combo of gold and copper. Okay. Now, I will be ordering more, and there's lots and lots of different combos. There's, you know, verdigris, so there's like greens and golds and coppers, and I mean, there's just tons out there. So I will be ordering in some different combos, but let's just take a look here and just touch on some different um, techniques that you can do. Okay, first of all, here's an easy one. Here's an easy one. Don't need any special tools. All you need is some double-sided tape. So what I did here is I laid tape down. And you can see I, I screwed up. This was supposed to be alternating. <laughs> I messed up. I got two gold in a row, but whatever. So how do you do that? Very easy. Now, a lot of these techniques I'm repeating from uh, ones with transfer foil. A lot of these techniques can be done with transfer foil as well. But today, I'm only using gilding flakes. So I'm going to take my double-sided tape. Let's just lay down a couple of strips. Here we go. Pick that up. I am going to trim off that excess because we don't need that. I'm going to need to take some adhesive remover to my scissors after this because they are getting sticky from using them to do this. Perfect. There we go. Okay, so I've taken two strips of adhesive, one and one. I'm going to take this first one off. I'm not going to take both. I'm only going to take one. I am going to use a box. This is what I've been using to do my samples for today. So you can see how I've got some leftover gilding flakes here. I use my gold. I use the copper. Most of them I put back into the jars, but I've left these because I want to share. If you have a bunch of different colors, you can mix them and use them. So see what I've got here? I basically have made this is what I've made here. So I'm gonna take, so if you've never used gilding, foil, gilding flakes, they are very fine little pieces of foil. Okay, I'm gonna take that, I'm going to press it into that exposed adhesive just laying it down there. Okay, we've got some copper. Let's push that in there. Now, I also just suggest before touching the gilding flakes, make sure you wash your hands. I have adhesive on my fingers, so now I'm gonna have gilding flakes on my fingers until I can get a really good scrubber and scrub them away. Okay, so I've got my gilding flakes all on there. I've pushed it into the exposed adhesive. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to take, where did my brush go? Here we are. Now, this is a stencil brush that I've had in my stash for quite a while. So any stiff brush will work. Uh, something else that will work is if you have 
cut and dry foam, you can cut a piece of it and rub that as well using this side. That will work as well. Or if you've got a stencil brush, you can use that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently go over that foil. And what I'm doing is I'm brushing away all of the gilding flakes that are not stuck to adhesive. Okay, so that's the one I've done there. Gold and copper. That's the one I've just done. Gonna tip those down to that end. See how light they are? Whatever you do, if you have to sneeze and you've got this, run away from the gilding flakes before you sneeze because if you do, they will go everywhere. You're probably laughing. Trust me on that. I've just exposed that next one. Same process. Gonna take those gilding flakes, just gonna drop them on there. Drop them on. Press them into that exposed adhesive. Make sure there's nothing sticky, no sticky bits left. Take your brush, again, circular motion. You're not pressing down too hard. What you're doing is you're just wiping away anything that is not stuck to adhesives. You're just burnishing it into that double-sided tape. Okay, you're gonna set that aside for just a moment. I'm gonna give this another brush. Brush away all that excess. And now, look at that. Isn't that pretty? You can put a sentiment over top of that. Um, maybe you want to finish the card and maybe die cut out something with it. It's just really beautiful. So an easy way to put gilding flakes onto a project. I've also done the same technique as like a frame. Um, that looks really good as well. Uh, but this one I am just doing as stripes. And like I said, this is the same technique that you can use with transfer foils. The same technique works. There we go. Okay, so there's technique number one. Easy, all you need, double-sided tape, you need a stiff bristle brush, and you need gilding flakes. Okay, let me set that one aside. Now, these here, these are two pieces of chipboard that I just had in my stash up front. Um, let me bring them in. So what I have done with these, I took them, they actually already have adhesive on them. They have, what did I use? Here we go. I used the deco foil transfer gel. So I took this. I put a little bit on my craft mat. I picked some up with my cut and dry foam and I tapped it over top of those. When you put the dual foil transfer gel on, it goes on white. When it goes clear, that means it's tacky and you can use it to do your transfer or you can do it, uh, use your gilding flakes and it will stick onto your project. I'm just gonna keep using all of this excess in here. I might as well use it. So again, you're gonna drop it on there. You're going to press it into the adhesive. Okay, take your stiff brush. So that's what it looks like there after I pressed all that gilding flakes on there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna go in with that stiff brush brush away the excess. Both front and back to get the excess out of those grooves. Now there are areas there where there's no gilding flakes. I don't know if you can see that. There's a couple of little spots with no gilding flakes. That just means that I didn't have enough adhesive on there. But what I would probably do now is I would probably go in with some um, some ink, some brown inks, and go in and cover that in and give it more of an aged look. But there you go. 
applying gilding flakes to die cuts. Very easy, or chipboard, sorry, chipboard. So there's one, let's try this one. Now this one, um, let's use this. Let's just use straight gold on this one. Big, big, big pieces. Lay that on there. Try not to breathe into the gilding flakes because we don't want to inhale those. Press, pressing those in. Got a little piece of the copper. Still some sticky bits I can feel, so we want to make sure all of those are covered. There we go. Okay, so I've got it all covered. Stiff brush going in there, wiping away the excess, just loosening it up. All the stuff that is sticking to the adhesive will stick. Going on the back just to loosen up some of the bigger pieces. Move that to the side for a second. There you go. There's still some bits in there. I'll probably have to go in. I've got a smaller brush just to go into the crevices. But again, you're just going to brush off the excess. And now you've got a gilded flake covered chipboard piece. Okay. There's another one. Now, let me show you. And because I've been playing with gilding flakes, look at this. There's gilding flakes already stuck to here. So what I did here. I took a piece of paper. Let me just show you. How to use gilding flakes with a stencil. Here we are. Stencil. Here, I'm going to do it in my journal. This is the back cover, the inside back cover of my Dina Wakely uh, chipboard journal. What I'm going to do is I am going to lay that in. I'm going to grab my stencil pal. I'm going to take my dual foil transfer gel. Now, you don't have to use dual foil transfer gel. Hot foil gel works as well. Um, really any, any adhesive that's going to dry clear, you're just gonna wanna let it sit. When it goes clear, it's still tacky, and then you're gonna want to um, do, your, do this technique. Okay, what I am going to do is I'm going to take my palette knife going to take my stencil pal. I'm going to put some on here. I'm going to hold my stencil and now I'm going to put that dual foil transfer gel through my stencil. Okay, so you can see it goes on white. Makes it very easy to see. Perfect. Going to just scrape off that excess. Going to put it back in that jar. Give that a close because you don't want to get any gilding flakes in there. Lift my stencil off. And now see how it's white? You're gonna wait until that goes clear. So I'm just gonna set that there. Now, if you use a stencil, you're going to want to clean it off quickly. You don't want that dual foil transfer gel drying on your stencil. So you're gonna wanna get it off before it dries. Now, normally I would run to a sink and give this a good scrub, but I'm just gonna use a baby wipe right now. 
and then I will go clean it properly after. Let's try and get some of that off right now. There we go. And let's wipe our stencil pal off. I love the stencil pal, by the way. If you uh, use stencils and you've got a, and you use a lot of uh, texture paste or uh, transfers that you wanna put through, the stencil pal is great. Now this is from uh, Decofoil Thermoweb and you get two of these in a pack, so it's really great value. Okay, so uh, we've put our transfer foil through. Now, let me move this in. I did two. I did this one, the exact same stencil. I did one on craft and I did one on white. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I could have inked these backgrounds. I didn't wanna take the time to demo that. I just wanted to demo the gilding flakes. So I did not do any inking, but I could certainly have inked the backgrounds of these. Also, make sure you don't have any adhesive on your fingers or you're going to end up like this, like me. For me, that's part of the fun, but some of you may not like that, especially if you've got those pretty nails, which I do not. Okay, I'm gonna press that copper down in, make sure it's sticking. I'm going to fill in the gaps with the gold. So if you're going to be using these to make um, card backgrounds or whatever technique, if you're using cards, you may wanna do multiples of these because yeah, after a while you're just gonna be like, I never wanna see gilding flakes ever again. So you may wanna just spend a day and just make a whole bunch of backgrounds. And then that way you only have to clean up the gilding flakes one time. Spreading that out, making sure there's nothing. Making sure they're all the sticky bits are covered. I don't know if some of you remember when I did a Gilding Flakes demo. Mm, I don't know when it was, over a year ago. It was way before COVID. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna take my stiff bristle brush. I'm going to go over and I'm going to start removing any of the gilding flakes that are not stuck to adhesive. So around and around in a circle, just removing those bits. Just gonna set that one aside, gonna do this one. Yes, when you put, oh, sorry, I'm not watching your comments. When you put the adhesive down, it goes on white. When it is clear, it is ready for you to apply. It is the exact same technique when you're using transfer foils. So these, the adhesive that I'm using will also work with transfer foil techniques. Okay, so now I've got it out of the box. I'm just gonna go over, do one last sweep. Perfect, so there's one. That's pretty. Let's do the one on white. I actually like the one on craft better. So this stencil, if you're interested, is from Paper Artsy. Uh, it was released last month. Now I am holding the bristles of this pretty tight down here.
Okay, let's give that a sweep. Lift these up. Move that off to the side. And there we go. A couple of really cool backgrounds. That is actually really nice. Those turned out so well. I love the mix of the copper and the gold on the craft. That's really pretty. So that's really easy. That is so simple to do. All you would need to do is do a die cut of a sentiment, put that on there, and then you've got a quick and easy card that looks like you spent hours on it. Really, the longest, whatever, the thing that takes the longest is letting that adhesive dry. Um, these ones I probably left for about 30 minutes. Uh, they were probably ready about, I don't know, probably 15 minutes in, but I got them prepped before we started the Facebook Live. And there's another one. How cool is that? That would make an absolutely gorgeous anniversary card. Maybe I'll finish one of these off and give it to Glenn later. Yay. <laughs> I made two, so I'll make one for him to give to me. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so there's another way of using gilding flakes. So that one is using, I use the, the, transfer, duo, the, the transfer Duo gel. Uh, the hot foil gel from the Crafters Workshop would also work. Um, these here, this is the flake and glitter glue, which is part of what I'm giving away. So this is a fine tip. So this one you could do actually some really cool techniques. You could do dots. You could maybe do some writing, some squiggly writing. Again, you leave it, you let it go clear, and then you're ready to do your transfer on it. Look at that. Oh, look who's fancy today. <laughs> So I've used a lot of this, but this is also going to be part of the giveaway. I've hardly even touched it because they stuff these jars full of this stuff. Uh, it's gonna be here for a good long time. So this is the giveaway and this is a giveaway. Oh, I forgot I have one more technique. Silly me. Here's, here's a card I actually finished. I'm gonna show you how to do this. This here. I wanna thank Heather for letting me use her her um, die. So how I created this card. Okay, let me show you how I created it. So this is actually one of the new card bases from Minte. I could not wait to try this. So this is the new card base from Minte. This is the scalloped edge, which is somewhere. This one. So they have it in craft, and they have it in white, which is the one I'm using. So these are card bases, they're four and an eighth, four and an eighth by uh, 12 inches. So there are three in craft and three in white. I use the white one, but these are available now too. I could not wait to get these. These are a heavyweight paper, so they'll take a lot of wet media. <clears throat> okay, so what I did is I took one piece of it, I scored it to make my card base. Then what I did, here we are, I took some die cut and bond, took some die cut and bond, I put a strip of that across here because I knew that it was going to fit my piece. So I took my die, I die cut it out of the black paper and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that release paper off of my card base. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take my die cut piece. I'm going to lay it on my card base. I'm going to press it on there. Now, what I have here now is all exposed adhesive. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that that is all pressed down. Let's take this. This is my release paper. I'm gonna make sure that it's all pressed down. Perfect. I'm gonna go back to the box. Julia, whatever you do, do not sneeze. Whatever you do, do not sneeze. I'm just gonna take my box, I'm gonna tip those down so they're down at one end. 
lay my card in there. Let's just gather up all this. I'm going to drop it across that exposed adhesive on my card front. Let's just drop all of that there. Let's begin pressing it down into the adhesive. This would be really great to do it with a butterfly. You're absolutely right. I completely agree. I did not have a butterfly die available to me this morning, so I used this one, but oh, yes it would. Okay, so let's press all that into that exposed adhesive here. I do not feel anything sticky, so I think we're good. Taking our uh, stiff bristle brush, going in, gentle circular motion across that die cut image. Loosening those up. Moving that box aside. There you go. This one was strictly just copper. This first one I made was strictly just copper. This one I used a combination of the copper and the gold. There you go. But these gilding flakes go a long way. So like I said, if you're gonna be getting them out, you may wanna prep a bunch of things, maybe a bunch of cards like this, a bunch of butterflies, and then just prep a whole bunch, oops, prep a whole bunch while you're getting your gilding flakes out. There you go. How cool is that? Very simple, uh, but stunning. When it's done, absolutely stunning. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. What I might do, and I thought about this after I went live, is I might get my, I have a copper and I have a gold gel pen. Oh, it's a paper artsy one. Yeah. And if you can give me the code on it, I'll tell the good people I'm a fifth book class because I didn't get that. Oh, wait, I do have the package here. I forgot. So if you are interested in that stencil that I used, um, it is PS245. No, it's paper artsy, so it's gonna be on that side. And we should have about 12 of them left. Yeah, PS245 is that one from Paper Artsy. Uh, this is a die from Paper Rose. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it is from Paper Rose, and we still have this one in stock as well. There you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Don't be intimidated by the mess because it is really fantastic. Um, okay, one more technique. Again, I keep forgetting about all these things I prepped. Um, here we go. So what I did is I took some Eclipse uh, masking paper, Eclipse masking paper. I created this masking piece here. It's just stuck onto, um, it's just stuck on uh, cardstock right now, but I have made a masking stencil. So what I did what I did, maybe I won't take it. Well, yes, I will. I want to do this. <laughs> okay. You know, this seemed like a good idea at the time. I put the masking paper onto the chipboard, put it through my die cut machine, and now I've got a mask made from that exact same die. I'm just showing you different ways that you can make your dies go further. So now I can put this masking paper down. It did rip a little bit there, but because it's sticky, there you go. Stick it into my art journal. I can take my double side or my, uh, my glue here. 
pick it up onto my cut and dry foam. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. Over top of my, I basically made a stencil out of that die. That's basically what I've done. Okay. I'm not gonna do the entire thing. But it is white on there. When that goes clear, I can take my gilding flakes, put it on there, and do the exact same technique. So you can make a, um, a mask with your dies and be able to do the same technique. So I'm just showing you a ways on how to use your dies, how to use your stencils to make them go a longer way. Perfect, let me put that aside. So, gilding flakes, wonderful. Look at what I've made. These are fantastic, love it. So we do have more gilding flakes coming in, in different colors, but right now, this is what we have. We have the copper, the gold, the silver, and the warm sunrise, which is a combination of the copper and the gold, okay? There you go. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. If you have gilding flakes and you haven't gotten them out in a while, you may want to get them out and have a bit of a play because that is so much fun. I'll be making cards out of these. I'll post them in the inspiration group. If you have any questions, um, make sure to post them. We'll get back to you as soon as we can on those. But have a great day. If it's beautiful out where you are, like it is here in Calgary, get out there and enjoy some of that sun. Have a great weekend, everyone, and we will be back next week with more great stuff. Bye.